So I'm getting close. Actually, very close to having enough information cross-referenced, checked, and summarized to do a big RDNA 3 leak soon. But actually, I think what I'm probably going to do is smaller individual leaks on each die in the RDNA 3 lineup because, well, their designs are unique enough and they're interesting enough, each one in its own right, you know, like Navi 31, Navi 32, Navi 33, that each one deserves its own spotlight. What AMD's attempting is very different from RDNA 2, and so it just requires a lot more conservatism in making sure you get the information right and present it correctly. But I do want to say this, though, a couple things at the beginning of this video, which is which is really about the road to RDNA 3 and Lovelace, talking about the products coming out before those products come out. I want to say a couple things up front that uh, people should keep in the back of their mind when they're talking about RDNA 3 and Lovelace. So first of all, when it comes to RDNA 3, I think people are over-discussing its performance and under-discussing its efficiency and how smartly designed the lineup is. Now, I, don't get me wrong, it's going to be strong. It's another gigantic leap like RDNA 2 was over RDNA 1, but I think a lot of people are assuming that it was done just with a ton of die and brute force. That's not really true from what I can tell. This is a frugal smart lineup from AMD that should just completely blow Lovelace out of the water when it comes to efficiency at the very least. And while doing that, maybe even take top performance. And this is not like RDNA 2 versus Ampere, where generally speaking, AMD was more efficient most of the time. This is like, I think NVIDIA's got a real true efficiency problem coming up here, which, I mean, not to be extra negative on Team Green, but... Another thing I think people are overestimating, at least as much as they're underestimating it, is Lovelace's performance. Don't get me wrong again. Lovelace is going to be a huge performance increase, bigger than Ampere over Turing. But at the same time, the initial targets, guys, I can't stop saying this, was 66% to about 80% increase over Ampere. So this idea of some of the craziest estimates I've seen, I'm just not really sure where, where those people think that's coming from, Right. If you think about it, it's just one node shrink, except it's also going to be overclocked out of the gate like crazy this time. Kind of like from Maxwell to Pascal, but then pushed as hard as possible at stock. So that gets you to, you know, around double the performance at insane power usage, maybe. I'm not saying that it can't be a little bit above double, but I am saying that too many people, I think, are assuming it's going to be wildly above it. And again, it's just a node shrink with overclocking. It is not two no drinks. Oh, and I guess another thing people might be getting wrong is when Lovelace and RDNA 3 are coming out with respect to each other. And well, I'm getting ahead of myself actually now. I want to talk about when these next gen architectures are likely launching and the things launching before them in case you can't wait for RDNA 3 or Lovelace. Although, yeah, I'll give some advice at the end for what you should probably be waiting for. But, but first, an ad from a sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by CDKeyOffer.com. As I put together a new benchmarking station for 2022, I know that whether it's running Windows 10 or Windows 11, I'll be getting that key from CDKeyOffer.com. And that's because it's a reliable, long-term sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead that gets you reasonable prices on legitimate keys for these types of products but it's really not all that they offer they also can give you keys for microsoft office uh keys for playstation codes and even some of the latest pc releases like elden ring a game that i'm enjoying quite a bit whatever you need cd key offer probably has you covered and they're always running sales but make sure you use the best code possible and that's the ones provided for the moore's law is dead fans moore's law is dead fans get the biggest discount and if you go to the the link on screen or in the description you can use code broken silicon to get 25 percent off microsoft products and die shrink to get three percent off everything else on the website using these codes really does help moore's law is dead and it helps you play reasonable prices for games that you want in keys that frankly you just have to use half of the time so again use the link in the description use broken silicon use die shrink depending on the products you're getting and pay reasonable prices for keys today at cdkeyoffer.com 
All right, then, let's start discussing the products that pepper this winding road on the way to the holy grails of releases at the end of this year, RDNA 3 and Lovelace. The first product I want to discuss is the first one launching soon, and the one I probably don't have that much to say about, at least that's good, and that's, of course, the RTX 3090 Ti. As far as I can still confirm, the launch date is still March 29th, although, again, it's going to be some kind of paper review launch, and it should be 7 to 11% stronger than the RTX 3090. Now, I know this sounds high to some people with how terrible the 3070 scaled to the 3070 Ti while gaining GDDR6X over GDDR6, but people got to remember that a lot of this gain, this hopefully around 10% gain for the 3090 Ti, is just coming from letting this card use a ludicrous amount of power, 30% more power than the 3090, and run it 450 watts. It's just being allowed to boost all the way, not throttle, and it's being pushed as hard as they can, getting memory clocks slightly above 21 gigabit per second and fully enabled dies that are boosting higher than I believe just about any other card in the Ampere lineup. Uh, they're doing everything they can to try to make sure that they launch this before the RX 6950 XT from AMD, that it holds the clown when AMD's RDNA 2 refreshes come out. And like I confirmed months ago, you're not really going to be able to buy it. And if you can, it's going to be about three to $5,000, which, yep, new leaks coming out confirm the pricing I warned you about. This is basically a non-existent ad to be at the top of charts before the 6950 XT launches, which at, then let's just get right into that. Let's start talking about the RDNA 2 refreshes. First, the RX 6950 XT, and I've got to say that I've seen some angry people in the comments accuse me of it not being fair and balanced, that I'm being hard on the 3090 Ti and giving the 6950 XT a free pass, but I don't know what you guys want me to tell you. Like, some people say, how are you sure this will be available? I don't know. Go to Newegg right now. The 6900 XT is in stock plenty. All the 6950 XT is, is putting different memory chips on cards that have always been able to clock that high with the memory and the memory controller anyways. And then they're just taking the TDB limit, guys, and making it 350 watts instead of 300. Or I guess some AIBs will probably make it higher than that. AMD's effectively been making this card since over half a year ago, except that was almost entirely supplied to OEMs. Now it's going to be supplied to all of you, and the TDP is going to be 350 watts instead of 330 watts. This should be a healthy 10% boost. Availability should be fine once they make the full switch from supplying this over the 6900 XT. And it's not like the 3090 Ti where NVIDIA is literally having trouble making any of them. This will be a real card. And although there will probably be some kind of transitional period where there's less 6950 XTs and a lot of 6900 XTs over time, it should be fairly available. And as long as pricing keeps improving at around a similar price as the 6900 XT eventually, although it will be more expensive than the 6900 XT at first, but again, it'll be available. And actually speaking on availability, let's move on to the next card in this RDNA 2 refresh lineup. The 6750 XT. This card is being pushed, I'm told, to replace the RX 6800. I can't promise it will be pushed any harder than 10% with modest improvements being expected in performance on this one, but they're just going to try to get it close enough to the RX 6800 that they can massively reduce or basically entirely stop making the RX 6800 that they never really wanted to make, right? <laughs> Actually, it's funny. If you go to AMD's website right now, it's like they're trying to tell you to just get the 6700 XT instead. As far as I can tell, actually, from talking to some contacts at AMD, they really regretted making this card 16 gigabytes for $580. And frankly, it was complete overkill for killing the 3070. The 3070 Ti couldn't even beat it. In fact, as far as I'm told from contacts at AMD, the only reason the 6800 ever existed at all was because they wanted to have some sort of pseudo 3070 competitor when RDNA 2 launched and Navi 22 wasn't ready. Once Navi 22 was ready, a die that's two-thirds the size of Navi 21 and has less RAM, so it's much more economical, especially with where RAM prices are now, they just pretty much stopped making them. They diverted that supply, which was already pretty small because there's not a whole lot of Navi 21 dies that need to be disabled that heavily, and they just used them for the W6800. 
Moving forward, I am told that this is directly their plan. The 6750 XT is an overclocked 6700 XT with 18 gigabit per second memory. Should be enough to firmly be trading blows with the 3070. And that's just going to be their sub $600 graphics card. Well, they keep the 6950 XT in the high end. And then any yields that can't become a 6950 XT, those are probably going to become 6800 XTs. They don't need to disable almost any cards down more than 10%. Anyways... Uh, like another card, they basically don't have to disable very much either. Navi 23, let us now get to the 6650 XT. This one isn't doesn't have that much to say. I was hoping AMD would push this extra hard, actually. I was I was really curious if they would try to go above 18 gigabit per second, because 20 gigabit per second is out there right now. And from what I'm told, might even be a standard for RDNA 3 cards, but again, that's for another video. The point is... In 1080p, the 6650 XT is closer to the 3060 Ti than I think a lot of people realize. If they manage to push it like 13%, they could make an argument that it's just a 3060 Ti competitor. But from what I'm told, it's not really expected to be pushed that hard. They just have better yields. They have faster memory that they bought in bulk to standardize with these refreshes until RDNA 3 comes out. And so just expect this to be, I don't know, 8% better than the 6600 XT and phase out the 6600 XT over time. And so I guess that gets me to summarizing this lineup. The whole lineup, this has already been leaked by me, is all 7 nanometer, has been leaked by a bunch of people. It uses 18 gigabit per second memory, which AMD's actually been using for half a year now. And it's expected to phase out older models. So in summary, you're basically, well, you should expect the RDNA 2 lineup to effectively be, as we get closer to the RDNA 3 launch, is at the top. The 6950 XT, probably above $1,000 most of the time. And then you have the 6800 XT, generally around $900 or less once prices get better. And then the 6750 XT at $600 and lower. And the 6650 XT uh, below $500. And then they'll probably keep the 6600 and the 6500 XT around. Of course, 6500 XT being on 6 nanometer with its brethren, the 6400, which I still can't confirm if that's OEM only, but that is coming in all of these cars. The 6950 XT, the 6750 XT, the 6650 XT, the 6400 are launching on April 20th with these other products from Ryzen. It's going to be a blowout of AMD reviews for refresh, budget, and overclocked products. The only other big thing of note to say about those cards is I can't confirm if any of them will have an MSRP. It sounds like they're considering it. They have MSRPs in mind. I'm not going to hazard a guess right now because, frankly, that's going to depend on what pricing looks like for components and what demand is like in about a month from now. That's when AMD will decide if it has an MSRP and what those MSRPs will be. But what I will say is I really think that there's a good chance that AMD is going to wait to see what happens with the 3090 Ti in a couple weeks. If NVIDIA doesn't give the 3090 Ti an MSRP, I think AMD is going to go, all right, then we won't either. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see $2,000 or sorry, $3,000 6950 XTs and $1,000 6750 XTs. I don't think so. Prices are coming down. But AMD is really not happy with the reception of recent products that undercut NVIDIA competitors in street pricing, sometimes by 50%. And they're like, well, all right, maybe we should just not give it an MSRP. If NVIDIA does it with the 3090 Ti, they'll catch most of the flack, and then we can fall suit. And that's something to look out for. And another thing to look out for soon is FSR 2.0 that will run on all of these cards. I actually was tipped off a few weeks ago that FSR 2.0 was definitely coming before RDNA 3 and expected to be a huge effing deal. But already AMD's teased it. And it looks really impressive. I, I think we should wait for third-party reviews, which are be coming in quarter two as AMD publicly confirmed. But... I will say that behind the scenes, they're saying this is it. We've got it working at a level that we think is good enough to go head-to-head -head with DLSS, or at the very least, I know it's not the same thing as DLSS, and they want to tell you it's not the same thing as DLSS because they're proud it doesn't need machine learning, but they want to get it to a point where people don't really care about DLSS. This is good enough, and if not better, actually and that they want it to be heavily supported in every game with good settings, not with wonky sharpening filters behind them or something. They want full support in every game you play 
before RDNA 3 launches so that RDNA 3 isn't a launch where people go, oh, FSR is coming, let's wait and see how that pans out, kind of like with the RDNA 2 launch where we were saying, oh, it's coming, but let's see how good it is. They want it to be good, well-supported, and have a lot of mind share before RDNA 3 is out, so the discussion is only about RDNA 3's performance and not people worrying if FSR 2.0 is good enough to make RDNA 3 worth buying over Lovelace with DLSS 2.0. Um, outside of that, then, before I get to RDNA 3 and... Uh, Lovelace, I guess it's time to briefly talk about Intel Alchemist, right? Because if we talk about 3090 Ti, then RDNA2 refreshes, then FSR, the next thing on this winding road is actually Alchemist. And I don't have that much to say about it. You know, they're going to barely do a paper launch in quarter one like I suggested they would. And it seems very plausible, unfortunately, based on the people I've talked to recently, that the high-end Alchemist cards... May not launch until May or, I don't know, some people even think late June. This is really probably a effectively late quarter two launch for high-end Alchemist. And the only good news I will say about it is the low-end one might actually launch first. And Intel's, I've been directly told Intel will buy market share if they have to with Alchemist. That if it comes out later, which makes people more hesitant to buy it before RDA 3 and Lovelace, they're happy to sell these cards below cost because... They're just going to flood the market with them in one part of the year before the competition launches their next generations, and they know they need to sell when they launch them because they're going to be outdated by the time RDNA 3 and Lovelace come out. So I would just say, no matter what, guys, re big reason it's taking so long is getting the drivers perfect, meaning they're not going to launch it with crappy drivers, or at least that's what they're saying. And also that they are not going to launch it later without lowering the price to make it look attractive. So whatever it is, we're going to have to wait for it, but they're going to price it as low as they can, probably even for some of the models below making a profit because they can afford to. And frankly, they're only launching 4 million of them this year, so they can afford to take a loss on 4 million cards to get some early market share and start working on perfecting the drivers with widespread users before Battle Mage launches. But before Battle Mage launches, RDNA 3 and Lovelace launch. But which one is launching first? Well, as far as I can tell, the answer actually probably is Lovelace. Lovelace seems to be pretty clearly a quarter three launch, with some sources telling me that it's almost... It's for the most part ready in its design now, but they're not quite ready with the drivers and the segmentation to get it out there. So Lovelace is coming quarter three and RDNA four is likely coming quarter four after Lovelace with the exception of maybe Navi 33 that could launch before them. But not RDNA three is a more complex design, really a more ambitious design. And the fact is AMD knows that this launch needs to be perfect. They could take the efficiency and performance crown, possibly even including ray tracing this time. And so it really needs to be a perfect launch and they don't want to do a launch with low availability. They plan to make a lot more cards than before, even though they made more cards than any recent previous generation guys. So they were making the cards, but they know this is their chance to take market share and they need to take advantage of it. So I don't expect them to make more cards than NVIDIA. And in fact, I do fully expect NVIDIA to churn out a flood of GA104 and GA106 uh, cards from Samsung and price them lowly if they need to, to hold market share if they can't get enough TSMC su supply. Uh, but... AMD is going to ship more than before, and they want to, even if they don't take 50% market share, stop being at the 20 to 30% mark. And so with that note, I guess that just means there probably will be, even if it's hard to promise exact pricing with how unstable the world is right now, availability is going to be leagues better by the end of this year. And I think there's going to be interesting, better priced products coming out until we get to Lovelace and RDNA 3. So in other words, if it comes to, when it comes to shopping advice, what I'm saying is things are going to keep slowly, steadily getting better every month. If you've been waiting and you really need a card, it's getting better, isn't it? Look around on the prices and availability on Newegg. It is getting better, but it's going to keep getting better. So you need to keep that in the back of your mind when you're thinking, should I buy something now? If you need to, it's better than last month, but it's going to keep getting better from here on out. And by the end of the year, we're going to have shiny new Zen 4 Raptor Lake 
processors powering new Lovelace RDNA 3 Alchemist graphics cards. And they're all going to be launching around the same time, possibly both from Samsung and TSMC. There, there's going to be a substantially better market at the end of this year. So if you can wait, I'm telling you, this generation is bigger. It is bigger than RDNA 2 and Ampere. It's worth waiting for if you don't need anything new. And I guess all there's then to say is you'll just have to wait for my upcoming leaks and other videos to hear what those products are exactly going to be like. Of course, I've already leaked Lovelace and I've already talked about RDNA 3, Raptor Lake, and Zen 4 a decent amount. But I have a lot more to say about all of those. And you're going to want to make sure you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button to not miss those videos. Subscribe to the Broken Silicon podcast and give us a review on your favorite podcast app. We've actually got a very exciting guest coming up to talk about FSR 2.0 versus the latest versions of DLSS. It's a game developer who is actually one of our most beloved guests that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that episode. And uh, just remember, you'll get that one early and ad-free if you support us on Patreon, in addition to exclusive podcasts like Die Shrink. So, yep, that's going to just about do it for the plugs at the end of this video. And uh, for everyone who's made it this far, as always, thank you for watching.